Hiya! Welcome to Tom Team Story and Craft. Today we are going to look at the Easter story and then we're going to make a super cool craft. We're super excited and hope you are too. So let's get started. Hey kids! Today I'm going to tell you about one of the most important and exciting stories in the Bible. It's all well, about- if you just cut those triangles into circles, it would have been so much better. Triangles are so much more easier to eat from sandwiches. Who's there? Oh, we've been discovered. Well, that's why you get for complaining so loudly. Well, if you had just cut them in circles. Sorry, don't. Okay, okay, that is enough arguing. You've been interrupting my story. Oh, someone got out of bed on the wrong side this morning. Shh, there. Let's listen to what she has to say. Thank you. Well, I was just saying that today we're looking at one of the most important stories in the Bible. It's the story of Easter. Oh, I remember it like it was yesterday. It, you remember it? Yes, dear. We were there, you know. We saw it all happen with our own eyes. What? Are you serious? Well, I was just about to tell the boys and girls the story of Palm Sunday. Palm Sunday? What a time! There were so many people there. Yes, Ak and Jean was there. Don't forget Billy and Audrey. Oh, I just love Audrey. And Jack and Jamimi and Paul. Right, right, okay, okay. That's enough. Let's get back to the important part. Jesus was there. Ah, ah yes. yes. Well, Jesus was riding on a donkey through the city of Jerusalem and a crowd gathered to celebrate his arrival. They knew that he had been doing amazing miracles. Ah, yes. We got our coats and laid them down on the ground. And lots of other people ran to the fields, climbed the trees and got palm branches and then they waved them in the air as he rode past. We knew he was special. Yeah, it was, a, it was a bit of a red carpet for Jesus because he really was great. People were shouting phrases saying, Lasagna! What? We were all shouting lasagna. No dear, we were all shouting Hosanna! Oh, well, I was shouting Hosanna. Yes, they shouted Hosanna to praise him, saying, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Yes, that's right. But there were some men, called Pharisees there, who really didn't like Jesus. They thought he was getting too much attention from the people. And they also didn't believe that he was the Son of God, so they were getting plans ready to turn the people against him. But we'll hear about that bit later on. All this talk of sandwiches and lasagna has made me hungry. Dear, you're interrupting again. Well, actually, Davina, I was just about to tell the people at home all about a really special meal that Jesus had. Ah, right. The following Thursday, Jesus and his disciples were gathered in the upper room of someone's house. They were sharing the Passover meal, which is part of the Jewish festival that week. But then something strange happened. Yes, we heard it all from outside. Jesus said to them that one of them would betray him. We couldn't believe that one of his closest friends would do something like that. Well, the disciples couldn't believe it either. Each of them asked if it was them. But when Judas asked, Jesus replied, yes, you are the one. Judas's head dropped and he hoped the other disciples hadn't heard what Jesus said. But lucky for him, they were all paying more attention to Jesus breaking some bread. That bread was really important because Jesus thanked God for it and said to the disciples, Take this and eat it. This is my body which is given for you. Then he took a cup of wine, thanked God for it and said, This is my blood which will be poured out for many people so that their sins can be forgiven. They all sat down and ate the bread and drank the wine. The meal continued long after this. But little did they realise that it would be their last one with Jesus. Later that night, Jesus took a few of his disciples to a garden called Gethsemane. And he spent some time there praying alone. And then we heard shouting. It sounded like it was coming from the garden. Well, it was. The Roman soldiers appeared to arrest Jesus. And who was with them? Judas. The disciples tried to defend him, but Jesus knew that this had to happen. So he was arrested and taken away. The next day was a beautiful day. The sun was shining and the birds were singing, but something wasn't right. Yeah, there was a trial where the people were to choose a prisoner who would be killed. They had to choose between Jesus and Barabbas. That Barabbas guy killed people and Jesus, well, he was innocent. That's right, but who did they choose to kill? 
They chose Jesus. They were shouting, crucify him, crucify him, even though he had done nothing wrong. Then they made him carry a massive cross to the top of a hill. We saw that happen too. It was horrible. At the top of the hill, they nailed him to the cross and put a crown of thorns on his head. They even put a sign on the cross that said, King of the Jews, to make fun of Jesus. The soldiers watched and it got even more mean and they, deci they decided to divide up his clothes. People shouted at him as they walked by, but Jesus ignored them. Jesus' mum was there. You remember Mary from the Christmas story. Yes. Jesus felt so sorry for her. She knew that Jesus was innocent, but nobody else seemed to care. Yeah, it was so sad. Later on that night, when Jesus was very weak, the sky became really dark. And just before he, did, he died, he said, it is finished. At that moment, there was a massive earthquake. It felt like the house was going to fall down. The people who had shouted, crucify him, realised that Jesus was the son of God. It wasn't a very good Friday. Well, it wasn't, but actually, still to this day, we call it Good Friday. Well, that's strange. Well, Jesus knew that he had to die so that we could be friends with God. Because of what happened, we can talk to God and be forgiven for the wrong things that we do. Wow, that really is good. And it gets even better. Oh, it does. Jesus' body was put in a tomb on Good Friday, and it was sealed with a massive stone and guarded by soldiers. But three days later, Jesus' mum and her friend went to the tomb to check on Jesus' body. And guess what? This is the best part. Oh, uh, I'm so excited. The stone had been rolled away. And Jesus' body wasn't there. He was gone? And, and there was an angel at the tomb who told them, Don't be afraid. I know you're looking for Jesus who has died. But he is not here. He has risen just like he said he would. The tomb is empty. See for yourself. We were amazed. Jesus did just what he said he would. He came back to life again. Isn't that an amazing story? Yeah, yeah it, it is. is. Now this all happened years and years ago, but it's just as important now as it was back then. That's why we should spend the day celebrating. We all go and prepare the party. See you later. And we'll even have circle sandwiches. Yes, dear, we will. Well, it looks like I've got a party to go to. This really is such exciting news that Jesus died and rose again for you. Why don't you spend the day celebrating? Bye! Today we're making an empty tomb out of dough to celebrate Jesus being alive. Preheat the oven to 80 degrees. We have a fan oven but adjust as you need. Get half a cup of salt, two cups of flour, three quarter cup of warm water ready to go. Mix ingredients together in a mixing bowl until the dough starts to come together. Take it out of the bowl and put it on a floured surface and knead it. If you do it sticky, add a little more flour. Start to roll it out using a rolling pin or a tin like we did. Roll it until it is between a quarter and half an inch thick. Coat your baking tray with oil. Put the small oven proof bowl upside down on the baking tray. Put a small spoon underneath the edge of it to prop it up slightly. Use the oil and cover the bowl in it so that the dough doesn't stick. Lift the dough up and slide the tray with the bowl underneath it. Our dough was still quite wet at this point so it ripped, but you can just patch it up if needed. Take a knife and cut out a round door from one of the sides. Place the door piece on the baking tray beside the bowl and squish slightly. Put the tray in the oven for a few hours. Ours took four and a half hours, but you may need less or more time. Make sure the dough is fully cooked before taking it out of the oven. Let your creation cool on the tray and bowl. Once cooled, take it off the bowl and tray. Decorate your tomb however you want. We painted ours with blue paint, but felt tips also work, so you could colour it in if you like. Be as creative as you can. Make sure you lay down some paper so that you won't ruin the table. And that's it. You've made an empty tomb to celebrate Jesus coming back to life.
Thanks for joining us. Don't forget to join us on Sunday morning where we'll have even more fun. Bye!